<laughs> okay. Um, I would like to uh, present the next speaker. Uh, his name is um, Michal Halas. He is coming from Poland. And he is talking about jumping to the next S curve. Michal, the screen is yours. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I would like to share a story. Uh, I'm not from academia world. Uh, I'm uh, closely connected to business, uh, mostly training uh, people, but uh, also consulting. And there is a, a certain story I found uh, was very useful for the high management people um, to uh, um, give them to think. Yes, of course, you all know about the S curve. And something like this is um, obvious for you, so I will go uh, further. Uh, this is um, the S curves uh, when the business people are not um, interested much in the technological um, wellness of, uh, of uh, the invention, but uh, market saturation, yes, how uh, much market penetration has the first uh, landline. Uh, telephone, for example, in the United States, it did not come to 100%, but saturated the market of whoever wanted to have telephone line. Then fast, much faster telephone, um, you know, first analog and then digital uh, mobile phone and smartphone is separate. Uh, then it is still faster than mobile phone was in the 90s, mostly. Uh, so... Um, this is uh, uh, first uh, observation, uh, and this again, uh, what you uh, possibly uh, seen many times already on, on trees uh, things. Um, this is, is giving some parameter, yes, um, um, of function, and um, mostly what I found, uh, business people are interested in money. Uh, the, the technical things are not, um, they, they usually are not fond of. So what is this? Guess what is this? You can uh, write to me on chat. What do you guess? It is from Slovakia, but it is in many countries. So what uh, do you think it is? No, it is not a, not a grave, not a house, no. Okay, good guesses. I will help you. This is an ice house. Uh, this is maybe 200 years old. So it was to preserve ice. Yes, people were loading in winter, were loading ice. And it was for very wealthy um, landlords to, to uh, take ice from it in summer or to keep meat or, or fish um, uh, fresh for a long time. And uh, there was no other technology 200 years ago, only uh, to uh, harvest the ice um, uh, in, in winter from, um, from lakes. And this is the man uh, who, um, uh, who made uh, really real money on this, yes? Many people knew in Europe and in other countries um, uh, that you can uh, have this technology. It is very convenient to preserve food, but uh, one man um, uh, took his imagination beyond the limits and uh, uh, thought about selling ice to hot countries. Uh, and he was American. He was called the King of Ice from Boston. His history is very, very interesting because he uh, went bankrupt several times, even went to prison because of that. But finally, he got next tour of investors to him and um, uh, made it successful. His invention was not very difficult from our perspective because he was using sawdust yes, uh, to make isolation, isolation. Um, on a ship, wooden ship um, uh, at that time. And um, he was uh, uh, sending the ship with ice to uh, Cuba. And uh, in Cuba, there was next invention of his 
it was ice house in the port because before he came with a ship and nobody believed there is ice for sale and the, the ice melted. So next time he built, um, invested in ice house in a port in um, a Cuban um, capital, uh, what is now, uh, uh, and um, he was selling ice very successfully to 50 countries. I believe India was, was the best um, client uh, for Frederick Tudor. And it is one of his many, many inventions. This was not his invention. It was invention of uh, one of uh, his um, suppliers. Uh, what you can see is a kind of a saw. Yes, it is steel blade to cut ice. And uh, you cut, you measure exactly how much uh, the, the squarish pieces you, you want. And you can very easily cut uh, the ice. So uh, the um, performance uh, went up three times. Yes, So, so the, the price of, of sourcing ice was uh, down. Um, and this is um, a later um, uh, a show for um, tourists in 1974, uh, how it uh, used to be in the old times uh, when uh, uh, ice was um, harvested from, uh, from the lake. Uh, so uh, the question is uh, about jumping from one technological S-curve to another um, S-curve because the new technology is coming. There is always coming. This is the inside of the ice house, how it was uh, distributed and filled up with uh, many tones of, of ice. Uh, it was doable at, at that time. And uh, first we come with uh, alternative technology. Uh, the man on the left is John Gorey, um, who was a physician, yes, doctor, medical doctor, who was caring for his patients. And he found that yellow fever uh, patients are better uh, well uh, if if uh, they are providing with some cooling. So uh, he um, invented machine and this is from his patent. Uh, he obtained this patent, but uh, the old technology was fighting. So Frederick Trudeau um, paid to the journalists uh, of that time uh, to make articles how risky is uh, to you know eat the ice from the machine it is um, worse than 5g in some countries yes your cows will be dead and the chicken will die or your children may be um, sick if you eat the ice um, from this machine and several other machines because you can see many other names and patents very interesting is uh, that uh, no um, um, company who was harvesting um, ice from the lakes did not change into artificial machine to make ice from water. All were newcomers uh, who were making machines uh, from five to 200 tons. They were very large machines, usually uh, filled with, with coal um, and was uh, generating ice, those machines. Uh, so um, uh, maybe the uh, von Linde, you, you know, because Karl von Linde moved into niche and the niche was um, gases, yes, uh, um, industrial gases, when you compress them or, or have as a liquid, yes, like oxygen, nitrogen, and some other uh, gases. So this company survived. All the others uh, are not known uh, now. Uh, this is the change of the uh, century from 19 to 20th century in United States, which is very specific on, on ice consumption. They, they uh, drink Coca-Cola with ice and, and probably everything they, they like with ice. And the um, refrigerators have, have um, the, the machine the distributor of, of ice. So at that time, uh, there was a special um, uh, man who was bringing to the houses um, uh, cubics of ice and apart from the lakes which were uh, running um, at uh, full speed they were 
at that time, 766 ice factories around uh, United States. And this is the picture I was looking very long because I couldn't find with the uh, glass, transparent glass. You can see the man who just brought with uh, this um, the, the ice cubes and the three ice cubes you can see and all the, the things you want preserve in, in low temperatures or there. It was only uh, unconvenient that once a day you had to uh, take water from from a special reservoir and take the water out maybe for plants or, uh, or for dog to, to drink it. Uh, so uh, the chiller, it was not called refrigerator, it was called uh, chiller, uh, was uh, quite popular until uh, the next S curve of uh, electrical electric um, refrigerator. This is one from 1927, but just before the First World War, uh, they were uh, invented and, and running. They were quite uh, expensive as, as you compare it to Ford Model T at uh, the year 1922. And the main problem was uh, that ammonia or um, oxygen, uh, sulfur oxygen, um, yes, SO2, those gases are toxic. Yes, there were uh, stories of whole families dying because at uh, night they were asleep and the vibrations of, of the machine made the machine uh, the, the leakage of ammonia or SO2 and the whole family uh, died during sleep. Uh, so this was very risky technology, even the risk, um, uh, there was over 1 million of those um, top fridge uh, by General Electric uh, produced uh, at that time and uh, one million of them. And then uh, in 1929 uh, came innovation, uh, which changed everything because a uh, new uh, chemical compound was, was found very useful at that time. Now it is forbidden, uh, freon. Yes, and freon was not toxic um, and um, everybody wanted to buy uh, those uh, even uh, during the, um, the period of, of 1929 uh, and early 30s, when there was Great Depression, the uh, few uh, products were, were higher in sales, and those were the uh, refrigerators. And the newcomers were making business, uh, for example, some Swedish uh, students um, uh, were making um, uh, first refrigerators for day market, uh, and as a startup, yes, from nothing, uh, they they started a well-known company uh, which is making not only refrigerators uh, and not only in Sweden now. So we have uh, several uh, S curves, and um, my personal story to this is uh, that uh, maybe uh, you are very happy with the first curve of this S curve because the market is finally uh, eating your product. Yes, uh, the, the, uh, there is um, enhancement, there is acceleration of, of sales. So business people are very interested in, in uh, things like this, but you have to do the work before. Yes, if you don't do the work uh, on the beginning of the S curve, you will not go up um, because there are competition who did the work um, and then uh, you, you have this marvelous uh, part of S-curve when, when the sales goes up. And I remember um, when I started project management trainings in Poland uh, from scratch and after maybe two years of the first part of the S-curve with uh, quite low sales, there was a very a big change in the market. Everybody wanted project management training. Uh, so uh, remembering my past products, uh, because my first company I started 30 years ago, and after maybe a year, there was so much competition. I, I gave up my product and started uh, to look for some other um, uh, technologies and other products. Uh, this time, Year after year, I was searching what is wrong, why there is no competition. 
And after maybe five years, I was completely asleep. Yes, I was not expecting any uh, competition to come. Simply, my S curve at that time was longer. Yes, it, it took uh, more years than usually. Uh, and uh, finally uh, came uh, far more competitions. The, the uh, markups were down. Uh, and I started to look for some uh, other technologies. Uh, other, um, I, I, I like to train people. So I was looking for something to, for, that I can uh, train people. And this is how I, I found trees. Uh, and uh, I'm among some people important to, in my country to, um, uh, to tell people uh, who didn't heard about trees at all to, uh, for them to, to know about trees. So no, um, no um, businessmen from uh, like Frederick Taylor and others who were harvesting uh, ice from um, lakes did not jump to the next technology because it is so difficult, so difficult. It is far easier to fight it as Frederick Taylor was uh, fighting new technologies uh, than to uh, join those technologies. Uh, also, those who were making uh, big factories of ice did not jump to the new market of uh, home electric refrigerators. Um, all of the newcomers were completely new in this business. They were startups, really. Uh, so um, my conclusion I usually give to my audience is where are you on your S-curve, yes? Are you on the S-curve in the second phase when it is very accelerating? Then beware, there will be some time, there will be the second uh, curve of your S-curve and uh, it will be very difficult uh, for you. So be prepared when it is... Uh, um, and. Business people uh, understand this and they are happy to, for the reflection uh, of this story. Imagine uh, that in 1908, you are uh, making the harness for horses. Yes, if you don't know what harness is, you can see on the picture, this is a harness for, for horse. And you are in United States and you see with your uh, eye uh, that horses will be out of the market uh, for, for general transportation very soon. Yes, they will be for some time, but not as it was before. So this was a problem of William Hoover. William Hoover had a long um, um, company, long, uh, he, company with long history of making harness for horses. And then he found uh, his business will be killed by this Ford T and some other automobiles. Uh, so what he did, he did not jump into making some um, elements for cars. He um, uh, was searching for any any um, new business uh, he can uh, jump into. And he bought patent from James Splangl Spangler. He was a, a, a cousin of, of, they were related, not very closely, but they were related. And the pro pro product is the first um, uh, in the United States, uh, they don't call it uh, vacuum cleaner so often. They usually call it just Hoover because of uh, the campaign of William Hoover who, um, used this patent to um, uh, um, make the market and, and infiltrate the market yes, is, uh, with new um, models of, of hoovers to, to clean the carpet. So he jumped from uh, one business to another. So this is quite easier not to uh, jump in your own technology. Uh, and finally, I'm um, closing. Uh, so uh, because I usually talk with businessmen, they like to see some financial data. Um, if you don't know, uh, General Motors is um, having uh, quite good profit on their products. Yes, Among some others, if you compare some other um, um, uh, some other combustion um, vehicles, um, 
they are quite well. Uh, many others are, you know, below 5% of, of mar margin. Uh, they are usually uh, um, over 10%, but watch uh, Tesla uh, on this, especially uh, if you uh, compare recent um, uh, information, you can see uh, that they have, it depends how you calculate it, but this is uh, that the first quarter uh, uh, and they have over 30% um, of margin. So if you buy a Tesla, one third of it, it is profit. Um, and uh, still they, they cannot fill uh, demand with, with those cars. Uh, and you have to wait many months uh, for this. So how do they make profit? I would like to show you just one example uh, of a small S-curve within the general industry. Yes? Uh, how to build the chassis of the car? Uh, it is very easy. You either use human welders, which is very, um, not often, uh, very seldom these days, because you use robots. Yes, robots are good investments, especially South Korea and China and Germany and some other countries. So uh, those are uh, robots and um, usually you have around 1000 robots to make the complete um, body in white of, of the car. Uh, so uh, what uh, Elon Musk, um, um, invented, yes. He was playing with a small car, uh, which was die-cast car, and he asked his engineers, why cannot we uh, die-cast, yes, uh, this, this whole car? And they said, oh, no, no, we, we cannot uh, make it um, because it is too big. You can do it with small items. With large items, uh, there, there are no machines for this. It is too complicated, too many problems. So they had to overcome a lot of problems. Did they uh, use trees or not? Uh, I don't know, uh, but I can show you the outcome of this. Uh, the, on the left, you can see old uh, Model T um, at the beginning. This uh, colored part was made out of uh, 70 pieces of metal, mostly steel, and uh, you needed um, 300 robots to make it, yes, to, to make this part, to in integrate it into the whole body of the car. And with the new uh, Model Y, you can see uh, that it is um, uh, done by die casting, yes? So it is one piece. They patented the, the alloy for this. It is mostly aluminum with some special, many special additives. Uh, so uh, they overcome uh, several problems with this. And uh, you have smaller space of your factory because you don't need those 300 robots. You need far less robots. So you uh, make more profit um, uh, and by uh, producing, yes, by, by production standards, it is a revolution. Um, they, they use IDRA, um, uh, la very large giga press machines to, to uh, get it. Yes, there is uh, not many uh, companies which can make so big machines. There are 20 meters uh, and many tons uh, to, to do the, the die casting, but then you, you don't need this 300 robots. So uh, this was, um, yeah, this is the, the uh, one giga press, which is, for example, uh, in Berlin, uh, next uh, nearest to me, but uh, in Shanghai and in the United States, there are several others. Um, so this is the, the exchange, yes, and they, uh, uh, th this is the way they are making profit. So I wanted to share this story with you. Uh, for you to use, I will send you on chat um, a link if you want an editable version, and you can do anything uh, with this uh, ve version. And finally, who knows what is Godray and the boys? Who heard about this? I'm looking at chat, no answer. I expected Indian people from India to, to tell uh, what is Godray and Boyce because it is known company in India, but nobody from India is responding. So it is a company which was not uh, making um, cheap products for everybody. Ah, Valerie knows, okay. And, um, 
they from nowhere jumped into number 24 of uh, Forbes 2015 list of most innovating uh, companies or growth in innovation and why they did it. Uh, this is the product and you can say, oh, this is nothing new. Uh, this is a fridge which is known to everybody for, for ages or at least decades. But there is a small change they did. Um, a Peltier effect, it is something which is known far over 100 years. So it is no uh, new. But what they did, uh, it is uh, one you can buy in Poland and it is changed. In India, they used additionally uh, Li ion um, um, accumulators, batteries, that you, if you don't have electricity, yes, or you, your electricity runs out and then for three days you have no electricity, then you can run it on batteries, which was very important for about 700 million Indian um, um, market of people who either did not have uh, electric power at all or had uh, limited access to electric power because there were the, the, um, the black out uh, for, for longer periods. So if you had a fridge, you could lo lose all your food um, within one or two days if there was no electricity. But if you had these batteries, you could uh, keep your food fresh for for a long time and if no still no power you could use a battery of rickshaw or, or car to um, um, load this charge this battery so uh, this is not that we only look at very high s curves but al also small l curves and niche markets at, as team was speaking just before me so um this is uh, end of my presentation and time calls for questions because I'm looking at time and I have still five minutes. Uh, so. Um, okay, Michal, uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it's always very fascinating to observe a history of evolution of a specific uh, product. Yes. Like, uh, uh, you know that my students do more, most of the time exercises. Mm -hmm. where they have to uh, draw a lot of S curves yeah. and, uh, within the history. I already have several hundreds of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know that now we have a system of indicators yeah. which helps to identify at which stage your product is at this moment. Oh, yes, yes. Um, of course, uh, I could go into more details. Uh, and yes. thank you for mentioning those. Uh, yes, there are far more details. This is my presentation, which I uh, uh, show to business high ranking people. Yeah. And I don't want to go into much details because they don't have time. Yes, okay. They have 20 minutes or 30 minutes and uh, they say, yes, thank you, because uh, they have, you know, uh, different ideas in their minds because they are on, on some place of s -curve with their products. So this was uh, what I wanted to share, but thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah, of I, I we think are... that in trees we miss in a book about s -curve evolutions. Uh, someone has to write this book finally. <laughs> um, there are questions from Hans Gerd Grabe. How relates Moore's law to s -curve theory? Yes, I'm checking. The um, Maslow, ah, oh, no. Moore's law. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you you see, uh, there was a, in the beginning there was the first uh, part of S curve. Then in the sixties, it maybe nineteen sixty three, it went up, and it is still going up. Uh, I can show you uh, that it did not go up to some expectations in last three or four years, uh, and some people said it is already flattening, but there are new um, um, uh, computers uh, coming and new technologies. So it is still before the ending, yes? But there will come a, a time or year when um, we will use all possible um, f possibilities the physics is giving us and we will not have more um, uh, speedier computers than, than before, yes? It will flatten someday. Mm -hmm. yes? I, I know uh, first-hand data from uh, AI market, 
uh, uh, it was um, mostly concentrated on uh, automatic um, driving. Yes, several companies died or went bankrupt because they were expecting new computers with higher um, uh, bigger speeds and and uh, higher pro productivity, and uh, there was no computers. The hardware was not going up to the expectations of of Moore's law. Can but I generally, add a question to this? Yes, please. Um, as far as I understand, uh, Moore's law. Uh, in uh, there are ma there were many technologies uh, in this time. Yes. Um, so uh, more or less, this more, if you say it, or is this also an S curve, and it will be have the same form. Uh, then my expectation of an answer would be: Oh, this S curve is is combined from small S curves. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of course, there were several small S curves in this large S curve. Of course, yes. Is this a general rule? Yeah. If you decompose the large S curves, you can see a smaller S curves, like invention of a lamp, invention of a transistor, uh, going to the microchip. It's yeah. all S curves, which combine in the large S curve. And today we are moving to two nanometers already technology, which is uh, reaching the physical limitations. <clears throat> a, good, a good concept would be, as, as far as I understood your answers, yeah. that uh, the S curve of disruptive S curve changes. Is this an interesting concept? Yes. Definitely, okay. yes, definitely. Be because Maybe for next conference. <laughs> okay. It is disruptive because it uh, increases the ratio of value versus costs. It is disruptive. That's why it is disruptive. All right, Michal, um, there is from Secret Fager, uh, yeah. the Indian fridge that has been on the market for decades too. The only new is that the battery is in the same box, which can be good for or bad. And Moore's law is to be continued by the switch to multi-die system. Multi-die system. Mm. Okay, it, it wish to be continued, but it will not go infinite. Uh, it someday it will have the, the flattening. Yes. I wouldn't rate this rather as an evolution than a new technology or as curve. Well. Exactly, it's blend of superposition of many small. Many small yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay, Michal, um, uh, let's. Um, you ask five minutes for um, the video, but I propose we put it to the end. Yeah, the, yeah. Yes, if you like the video, I am sending you the link, and there okay. is a whole uh, of my presentation, and you can see the video, uh, five minutes okay. video as well. Thank you very much.